is here. No. <clears throat> yeah, so today I'm going to tell you about our recent work on how to view uh, X phases of H theories as uh, SPP phases. So, so my name is Sergei. I'm from Karlstadt University in Sweden, and I did this work together with people with Umberto Borova, Gilt Shah, Ryan Sandgren, Ruben Perez, and Ashton Okay, so let me get started. So this talk is about gauge theories. And we know that gauge theories are very important for our current understanding of how to build fundamental uh, theories of physics, for example, general theory of relativity and standard model of particle physics. They are all based on the gauging principle. And uh, I guess everyone who studies these gauge theories uh, might wonder at some point why they're so useful given they have these redundancies and mathematically they are pretty intricate. And when you study it in the context of relativistic field theories, textbooks book answer is that it gives us opportunity to combine together three important principles, uh, unitarity, locality, and Lorentz invariant. But when we study condensed matter physics, there uh, we get a complementary perspective on important gauge theories, and this there they emerge. So, so there are some strongly correlated phases of matter, such as uh, you know fractional quantum flow fluids, quantum spin liquids, and also superconductors, uh, where you know at low energies uh, gauge structure uh, emerges and uh, the confined the confined phases of gauge theories turn out to be our best means to describe uh, quantum topological order, uh, which Haruki introduced uh, this morning and which comes uh, together with uh, anions, ground state degeneracy on uh, surfaces with holes and also with long range entanglement. So Today, I'm going to talk about the simplest gauge theory possible, which is Z2 or Eisen gauge theory, which was discovered uh, more than 50 years ago by Franz Wagner, who studied dualities in the Eisen model. And uh, this is the simplest gauge theory, which can be written on the lattice. But before uh, introducing you the model, let me just quickly remind you just to set up the notation mostly uh, about first non-gauged Eisen model, the ordinary Eisen model. I will be working on a two-dimensional square lattice where spin one half operators will live on sites and uh, the Hamiltonian of the uh, Eisen uh, Hamiltonian in transverse field is written here. We have a term which uh, uh, the coupling here I will call curly J uh, is, is uh, which tries to order the system. And then there is a transverse field which competes with it. And this model enjoys a Z2 symmetry, Eisen symmetry, which is just a product of uh, all the X matrices on all sides. And we know that uh, uh, we have uh, two phases, uh, the ordered one, where the order parameter for its correlation function gets uh, finite expectation value and the disordered one where uh, this expectation value will go to zero. And uh, this falls nicely into Landau paradigm of distinguishing phases by asymmetries. So now the Eisen gauge theory is a, uh, is, is a, is a related model where now uh, the the operators will be, the degrees of freedom gauge fields, they live on, on, on links. Uh, of, a, of a square lattice for us. And uh, it's a, some kind of discrete cousin of electrodynamics. So we have sigma Z and sigma X operators, which are the phase of, in, in, in U1 gauge theory, it would correspond to the phase of a gauge field and the phase of an electric field. And now the, the two terms which compete with each other is a so-called magnetic term, which is which is product of sigma z on these elementary plaquettes, and we sum all, all of them. This I would call magnetic term, and this coupling j I will call magnetic coupling. And then there is an electric term uh, here, uh, which which I will call h. 
so if you check this, uh, like look into this Hamiltonian, you will uh, immediately see that it is it commutes with a, a you know large number of uh, local operators where you know which you can construct around each side by just multiply by just multiplying electric operators sigma x on on on, on stars emanating from 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 the side. So this means that the whole Hilbert space splits into a large number of super selection sector. And to define the problem, we need to fix which sector we are interested in. And so the simplest one uh, is, is, is where we have no defects and uh, the, uh, there are no static charges. And for this, for this, uh, uh, for this case, uh, there is a the phase diagram of this model is a function of a dimensionless order parameter is shown here. So there are also two phases, somewhat similar to the Ising model, uh, which are separated by by the Ising, essentially Ising uh, transition. But uh, now we cannot distinguish the two phases by uh, any local order parameter. Uh, there is a non-local probe, uh, which is loops essentially. Which uh, which can distinguish uh, these two phases. This was discovered by Wegener in his paper. Okay, so so before going on, let me just also mention that this theory was the first example of a lattice gauge theory. It was discovered somewhat uh, accidentally, I would say. It predated a little bit uh, the systematic approach or when Ken Wilson uh, decided to try to put his bridge theories on the lattice. So, so this is the first lattice gauge theory. And in general, lattice gauge theories are nice because they open up a lot of uh, new horizons. So one of them was uh, that people, we, we can start, uh, we, we could study systematically strongly coupled uh, you know, expansion in, uh, within this framework. And also numerically, one can simulate gauge theories on computers uh, in, in this formulation. And also, quite interestingly, uh, both Wagner and Wilson independently came up with a uh, with a diagnostic of uh, of confinement, which is this uh, uh, expectation value of of large loop operators, which we can call Wagner Wilson loop. They behave differently. As we go from the deconfined phase to a confined phase, so the the, the so-called perimeter law changes to uh, uh, to the to the area law in a in a, in a pure gauge theory. Okay, this is my uh, the end of my general intro. So so let me now move on to the uh, to the topic of this talk, which can be summarized by this slogan that Higgs is equal to SPT. It is based on these two papers. One of them we published in SciPost 2021, and one of them is on, on archive. So let's get started with the, with the Higgs. What is a Higgs phase? So we know that uh, in, in physics, a Higgs phase is well known in, uh, in the standard model, right? It explains the nature of electroweak interactions and explains why W and Z uh, bosons are massive. And also in superconductivity, uh, we can view uh, superconductors as, as Higgs phases of a U1 gauge theory. The photon is massive, and uh, that's why we have Meissner effect in, in superconductors. So, so I will study the simplest possible. Uh, uh, Higgs Higgs model. So so let's take this Z two gauge theory which I talked about already, and let's couple Ising matter to it. So we will just take our uh, our Ising model, and we will introduce here. So on on you know here these are some of the neighboring sites. So we will we will we will add this sigma Z operator, which is a Z two gauge field, and in this way we will we will we will gauge. So this Ising, Ising charges, they carry now uh, Z2 gauge, Z2 gauge charge. So this would be the model which I will be talking about here. This is a, uh, this model was first 
discussed in a seminal paper by Pratkin and Schenker, who studied uh, this in the context of peaks and confined continuity and, and the phase diagram of various lattice theories. So, so in order this to be a good, uh, so, so, so this, this addition actually uh, leads to the fact that we, we, we have to modify the Gauss law. So, so this Hamiltonian should be understood with a, with a, with a hard constraint, which uh, is shown here. Uh, here we have a, you know, the star, which I told you about before, times X acting on side is equal to one. This means that in my gauge theory, all Z2 charges are carried by dynamical isentmetre and no static charges. How do you see that from that interaction? So, so you, 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 you can see that you, you need to modify the, uh, you know, the, the Gauss law because uh, this, the original Gauss law would not, would not commute with, with this term. But this Gauss law, commutes with, with this term, which, okay, so, okay. Oh, can you turn the notation just one more time? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the spin halves living on the sites labeled by V? That, right? That's correct, yeah, sorry. So this is the vertices, okay. Yeah. Okay. and uh, this is like links. Okay, so and two neighboring. And ZV is the, like the sigma Z. Yeah, yeah, Z so, sorry, so, so exactly, so, I have sigma, okay. z and x, these are gauge fields, and okay. x and z are matter ising, okay. ising matter, my size. But they're, they're operators acting on the spin half space, like, like that's right, that. that's correct. Yeah. And you have a catch. I have, so, so my Hamiltonian is this one plus the, other. plus the one which I introduced here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. What is the phase diagram of, of this model? So this goes back to Pratkin and Schenker, but uh, you know it, it also was studied later because actually you can get rid of the two get this is model this model written in terms of gauge redundant degrees of freedom, but it's easy to rewrite it in terms of gauge invariant spins living on links, and then if you do that, you will end up with a with a toric code model which Haruki introduced uh, uh, this this morning. In, uh, in in external magnetic field, so there are two terms. One of them is uh, you know uh, essentially uh, x and z external uh, external fields, uh, which try to destabilize my, uh, our toric code. So the toric model, toric code model is on this diagram, which is here. If, if I go up, I increase this coupling J, which is this Ising coupling, which controls condensation of my of my matter and this coupling h which appears here uh, controls confinement essentially so so it tries to uh, to condense uh, magnetic excitations or m particles which are visits uh, and so so this is this is the the phase diagram which people uh, discovered in different ways, both uh, so numerically, and uh, one of the important uh, one of the important uh, kind of observation is that there is there seems to be no phase transition here. So there is a first order transition line which stops here, and so this kind of suggests, and it's very clear in the Torico language actually that these two phases or regimes are are continuously connected with it's, each other. It's a tort code is not the phase. They can find phase. Yeah, phase. Yeah, you can call it what they phase. There is no gapless photon here, but it is. Yeah, here is what they call it. So they can find gauge here. Yeah. In the Higgs phase, what is the equivalent of the Higgs field expectation value? So I will talk about it later. So, so we we have a non-local correlator, which gets a finite graph, which is essentially a matter matter connected by a Lewis line. Okay, so this is... Anyway, so there is an interesting discussion uh, in the literature, uh, which also some of our organizers uh, are involved in, which has the name Higgs confinement continuity. And so I would like to add our perspective on it today in the context of this uh, Z2H theory. So the solid lines are second order phase transition? 
uh, yes, Ising phase transitions. Yeah, that's right. And, and the, the two dots. Are, uh, what, what transition are those? Yes. Yeah, so, so this is like a mysterious. Uh, this is when these two Ising come together. So debate it in the future what that is. And this is the first order phase transition line ending with a second order point, I think. But it's like a it's kind of you know you can go around. So I see. But you're saying that it's not clear this what the nature of those two uh uh second order transitions are this, right? Is that uh yeah, especially this this one, I think it's it's quite yeah. I uh, just, look, there, there, there is a conjecture like I equals two KD description for that point. Uh -huh. so, so nice that one, yeah. yeah. So I equals two KD description for that one. And for a code based correspondence, you will appear come and say, oh, for a to KD, and it's going, it's going to become the protocol. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And that point has, has her explicit EM duality, which is her symmetry in J and H. Yeah, so it leaves, leaves on the diagonal. And that's the two plus one cube. So two plus two. Just make sure that n equals two is the charger. No, no uh, it's an f equals two. And then it also yeah. will be three d plus right. Okay, any more questions? All right, so, so let me start with, with our stuff. So, so in order to understand, well, Okay, I won't, I will tell you in the end what is our perspective. So in order to move, move forward, we need to understand global symmetries of this problem. So, so let me kind of get into this now. So in our story, there are two global symmetries whose interplay is very important. One of them is the symmetry carried by matter, kind of Isaac symmetry. And another one is a, is a, is a Z2, so called one form magnetic symmetry, which, uh, which is also present uh, in, uh, in a specific region. Yeah. Sorry, so, can I check? The, isn't the Z2 symmetry the first one just gave you? Yeah, so I'm it's getting not a global symmetry. I'm, I'm getting it. So, so bear with me, okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay, this is exactly the question. So what about the matter symmetry, right? So, how? so you are right. So, so if, you, if, you, if I take my Gauss law, and if I take a closed surface, Right, and then just multiply all Gauss laws together, then I can see that my would be Ising symmetry is identically equal to one. So there is only one sector in the in the in my whole Hilbert space. It's not a, an actual symmetry, it's a, a you know redundancy. So there is the, the, the symmetry is trivialized by gauging because there is only one sector, not two. And it's not so simple if you have a boundary. So imagine I have a boundary now. So, and I have a boundary with links sticking out. So, so this, this notation here is a bit confusing. So these dots are, are just links, okay? And, and these intersections are sides. And now I will do the same. So I will just multiply all my Gauss laws together. Uh, this will give me the, the product of all axis, which is my, uh, my, my would be Ising symmetry. Does not trivialize completely because, you know, uh, the, it measures essentially the product of sigma x, what is called, this is a top electric field going along the boundary. So, so basically in the presence of a boundary, uh, of this boundary, the, there is a global symmetry which survives on the buffer gauging and it acts, acts on the boundary, okay? And what it measures essentially is that it disallows kind of Eisen charge to come from outside, so I cannot pull through a Wilson line and and and, and get extra matter. So it's prohibited by this uh, by this by this symmetry. So so this is a symmetry which is present if I have a bound. Okay. So in the continuum language, it's like the counting charges. Probably, yeah. I guess you can think about it like that. Yeah. But here it's very explicit. So. so uh, should I view this as a specific void of boundary condition, or is this somehow inevitable? Uh, no, you can, you're totally right. It's a specific choice of a boundary condition, which, uh, which uh, respects both symmetries, which are relevant for us, which is this one and magnetic one. So for the magnetics, because you can say like, why not to cut it without sticking links, right? 
And then the problem would be that the other symmetry, which would be important for us, the magnetic symmetry will be violated by the boundary. So I, I'm choosing the boundary such that the symmetries are respected. Okay. Uh, uh, can I understand that the boundary condition are the individual boundary condition for some field in the passing language? Uh, that's possible. I haven't thought about it this way, but I guess there should be some kind of. Uh, Formulation with that. So, yeah. And the data field, uh, suppressed fluctuation of the field or what kind of field fluctuation is suppressed by the I do not know if I would call it like that. So, oh. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a boundary which gives rise to a, a global symmetry. Yeah, right. Acting on meta fields or acting on meta fields. Acting on meta -fields. Meta -fields. Yeah. So, so there is an Eisen symmetry which acts, which you can measure by measuring the top line. Yeah. Okay. So, Sorry, it's our last question. Could you just explain the line no charge matter transported through the boundary again? I think I think yeah, so right. imagine I kind of write an operator which creates a Wilson line which starts on the boundary and ends with a here. Mm -hmm. This this would uh, this this would uh, would not work. So because it would here there would be sigma z. Sigma Z and here there would be a charge Z, big Z. So so this would this is disallowed by, by this. disallowed meaning I should not add that operator to my new ground here. Yeah. Is that what you mean by disallowed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. You kind of add to the Hamiltonian of this kind of Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so suppose I just look at the Oracle Hamiltonian, not the explicit J which matter yeah. theory. What would this uh, boundary nature would look like? Okay, so if you do, so you want to, so it's, it's, it's somewhat subtle when you do the, yeah, so if you want to, to you know, write it in terms of gauge invariant degrees of freedom, you need to be careful near the boundary because you, usually you would, you would like take two charges and the gauge field and you call it a new spin. So here you would need to do like a charge and in the, in the gauge field. So uh, it will. I, I would need to think about it because it carries this this this, this matter charge. So so I I do not know precisely how it will work, but let let's do this gauge formulation. I think it's safe to work within this. Yeah. Okay. Another way how to understand this is is you can also you can, you can also make some kind of insulating defects. So you take your bulk system, and then you just say that you are not allowed to pop matter through some insulating region. So you just kill, uh, you know, the uh, the hopping, make it very expensive. Then you know uh, there is also a global symmetry in that case because now if you look, for example, on, on the left and mu multiply all Gauss laws together. You get also this uh, top line, for, like going around, along this cut, and this is also a global symmetry. So you do not need to kind of end your lattice. You can also kind of uh, make this insulating, insulating defects if you want. The so, important point: I need this better symmetry for for, for what I kind of going to talk about later. Yeah? So does it mean that so by exchange of z sigma z z tan becomes zero on the so which term is actually kind of unknown? Yeah maybe I think maybe more like infinity you do not want to ah, up okay. to infinity ah, okay. yeah. you do not you do not you do not want to suppress it right so how I see right so <laughs> can that just be reinterpreted as that being the end of the world like, yes you can exactly just think about the boundary the, 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 you cannot you cannot the important point is you cannot take a single matter and move it through yeah so can other things move through uh other things like, like you mean visons so magnetic particles uh no because there will be another symmetry which prohibits it okay so, so that it really is just introducing a boundary in a different way. So wait, wait till I talk about the next. Now, if you do not like this stuff about these boundaries, there is also another way. So you can also think about 
emerging or what I like to call gently gauging. So imagine you introduce your gauge theory like energetically. So you take your model and then you say that like I will add a term which uh, you know with some coupling which which introduces the Gauss law energetically. So so there is no strict Gauss law here. I can also actually introduce another like like these two terms which kind of tells me that you know if k is very large I get I end up with a gauge theory. If k is very small, I freeze out all my gauge field and I just get ordinary Isaac model. So this is this is a model which which at large k has uh, you know the same uh, the same features as before. And now there is because I do not have a strict constraint, I just have a a usual Ising symmetry. So you can you can check that this this commutes with the with the Hamiltonian. So you can you can also view it as an ordinary symmetry in this models where gauge theory is emerging like energies. Okay, this is one of the yeah. So for previous slide, can you see that the data like does that mean whenever I implement some any condensate along a along a line, you will introduce a new type of global C2 symmetry here in that where you have any components. Uh Yeah, so what I will be doing later is I will be condensing one type of anions, the matter anions. And uh, yeah, the important thing is that I do not want this Wilson lines to with with one with charge with, with one charge and to to enter them. So I guess you can you can say that's just yeah. Okay. This is about the matter symmetry. Then, then there is another symmetry, which will be important, which is a magnetic symmetry. So this symmetry appears only if we switch on off tension with the strings. And then what happens is that the Hamiltonian commutes with every close Wilson line of signal this. Or if I have a boundary, it can also end, start with the boundary and end of the boundary. This is a special type of symmetry because it, it, it defined on a, you know, uh, on surfaces with, uh, with, with finite co-dimension, so it's a, it's a, it's a higher form symmetry. And these higher form symmetries are uh, interesting and uh, exciting because recently people uh, rediscovered how to think about topological order in terms of uh, these symmetries. And uh, the interpretation of topological order we can find based on the two gauge theories that the symmetry is broken spontaneously in, in, in that phase. So what do I mean by that? So I will mean by that the following. So imagine I have a, this close Wilson line and I, I, I'm saying that if I act on a, if I have a contractible loop and act on the, on, on the ground state, it's, it's an eigen state of this, of this, uh, this operator, but if I start thinking about non-contractible loops on, on, on torus, then these operators toggle my ground state. So they are not, they are not invariant under that. Oh, the charged operators are Wilson ones, right? No, no, this is a generator of symmetry. This is, a generator. This is what commutes with my Hubble. I think normally this is very good into the charged operator. That's exactly, so I'm confused by calling it magnetic one from symmetry. So normally it's electric one from symmetry. This is the magnetic symmetry which is generated by the Wilson line, which becomes topological on that each terms of the Yeah, yeah, but then wouldn't the order parameter be the kind you know, of the Chost line and not get rid of the Wilson line? Yeah, yeah that's, that's just that, that's what you mean by that EI integral A. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is, part, yeah. yeah. I think it's just notation. Uh, that's what I suspect. I'm talking about generators of symmetry here, not about charged operators. I'm just talking about so, so. So this, these operators commute with a Hamilton and if I switch off this. Right, but on the next slide though, I think normally this is not the generator, but the charged object. That's I think the point. No, if, like, if I have spontaneous symmetry breaking, what does it mean? If I act with symmetry, my ground state is not invariant under that. So I'm saying that this happens when 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 you have non-contractable loops. So if on a torus, yeah, so here I think we're considering the kink city being Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. There is another perspective which would be useful for us. We can also think about, we can diagnose this symmetry breaking by saying that the defects of our 
topologically ordered phase, which are you know anions uh, connected by by loose lines. They are uh, you know uh, are, they are not condensed, so so they correlate their decays very quickly. And the interesting thing about these higher form symmetries is that you know if we break them explicitly, the topological order does not disappear immediately. So so there is some robustness which people are uh, excited about of, 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 of the symmetries. So now let me move away from this deconfined phase. Let me move to the other phase, which respects the symmetry, meaning that this correlator is, is not exponentially decaying, but gets a finite value. Well, this is what I want. I want to condense my charges, and this is defined by this, by, by this property that if I take two charges, uh, connect them by rules and line to make a gauge invariant object, this gets a finite vacuum expectation value. Okay, so in presence of a boundaries, by the way, I can also think about uh, these operators, right, which are not allowed by in the Hamiltonian, as I said before, but but uh, this is also gauge invariant objects. And uh, so in this phase, by just, just by definition, that's what, there is no spontaneous symmetry breaking of the uh, magnetic symmetry, and one can ask, like, what it is, right? Somehow, if it does not, if it's not broken spontaneously, what is what is this phase? And my claim is that this is a symmetry protected topologically other phase. And so, for people who study SPT, it's, it, 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 it would be very clear because what, what gets finite value is, is this object. It's like uh, sigma z's in our gauge theory, and also it's it, it's, it's 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 sigma z's. Uh, like decorate it with this this in the end to make it gauge invariant, and this is how people detect SPT in in the bulk. They they look into this what is called string order parameters. But let me talk a little bit more so about SPTs here, uh, just uh, to make it more clear. By the way, this symmetry is present in this in this picture only on that line, right? Because it's a fine at zero h. Okay, SPTs. So Haruki already introduced that. So let me just go quickly through that. These are some kind of short range entangled states without topological order. And uh, they, they, are, they are different and separated by phase transition. If we have symmetries which protect them, if we relax symmetries, they, uh, they uh, you know, the, the phase transitions disappear and everything is connected to each other, which is essentially continuously connected to state with no entanglement. So there are some examples here, which are well known. So, but here I will talk about this particular SPT, uh, which is called cluster SPT. So imagine, now let me work in 1D. I have a chain, and I have two types of uh, sites. One of them I call vertices, these are blue, and links, which are red. And now I will write a Hamiltonian, where I have a term, which I can call cluster, cluster Hamiltonian, which is product of these three spin operators. Always two of them act, let's say, on red and one on blue, or two on blue and one on red. So this, are, this is a so-called cluster Hamiltonian, and it, comp it competes with a, with a trivial paramagnetic Hamiltonian, which tries just to polarize everything. This Hamiltonian has a, a, a symmetry, which is a product of two Z2, uh, you know, uh, subgroups. One of them is just a product of axis on all sides, uh, which are these blue dots, and another is product of sigma z's on all links. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. You, you have sigma x, x, and sigma x. Are, are the products all dense products? <laughs> yeah, so x on the link. So, so let me take this. For example, this is n side, so this is xn acting here, sigma n acting here, and sigma x acting here. Okay, so now the question is, what is the phase diagram of, of, this, of this model? And it turns out that it's, you know, the ground state always respects uh, both symmetries. There is no spontaneous symmetry breaking here. But as we change lambda, there is a phase transition, mysterious phase transition, lambda equals to one, and the question is what, how you can distinguish these two phases. And uh, turns out that we, 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 we could use this non-local string order parameters 
For example, in the trivial phase, this gets a finite ref, but as we go through lambda equal to one, it goes to zero. While on, on the other side, there is a different other parameter, which is this sigma z product of sigma z decorated with this x z. And so this is the way how people detect SPTs. Uh, they, 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 they compute they compute this these other parameters. So because they they detect phases which have no uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking, and there are different phases which have no spontaneous symmetry breaking. That's why there are different other parameters. There's no ball stop here. Right? These are technology. Goldstone? Gauss is not. There's no Gauss. The links are not. Ah, yeah. This is just, uh, you know, uh, just, just, yeah. this is just a usual spin model without any yes. strings. Okay. So one thing What's which. The you... behavior of the free energy at lambda equals one. Sorry? The behavior of the free energy at lambda equals one. Is so, there any singularity? So you have a gapless point there. So. So it's a second order transition? Yeah. Yeah. I do not in what universality class. I'm not sure. I think maybe it's does anyone know? Like in C01? I think yeah, I mean standard is one the SPD tree of transition. You don't need C plus one, just the you know the one single one time. Yeah. <laughs> Must it be second order? Could it be first order? Maybe not told you do not know, right? Well, yeah, I was asking about I don't see I would have guessed just in case three of us. I, I don't understand. How can you have a bulk transition if all the effects are surface effects? Sorry? I thought all of your effects were surface effects, right? No, I, I'm making an example now of SPT. So so it's maybe it's a bit like I wanted to explain what SPTs are to, to explain. Uh, okay, like, so this is a different. It, it's, it's a detour. It's not like completely okay, but, but detour. You, in the theory, you originally dealing with. with the effects of the surface. There's no bulk transition in surface. I will come back to that. So okay. view it as a detour. How yeah. much time do I have? Oh. Um, one minute. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> okay, then I need to speed up. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so let me try to go quickly through this. So, so uh, so, so, so what one of okay, how much in the <laughs> few more minutes? Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, okay, then I will skip this part. So, so it's possible to show that this, this, this string order parameters immediately imply presence of H modes at the boundaries. One can show it, but given that I out of time, I will skip this, yeah. but. Uh, what I will what I will do is like you might wonder why I spend so much time with this uh, with this SPT uh, cluster SPT and the reason is that if you think about our model which I introduced this uh, you know uh, gauge Eisen model and let, let's think about its version in one dimension then it's it's exactly this cluster SPT is exactly what we have so so if I take a one dimensional version of of a gauge Eisen model with a constraint. Now constraint this looks like that. Then you know if I crank up J, which is exactly going into the Higgs phase, then uh, you know essentially what you do is that you want to make this to be equal to one. This is equal to one by the constraint, and this is this cluster SPT which I was talking about before. It will have automatically protected edge modes at the at the boundaries. If you go away from this limit and go to small J. Then it turns out that you go into the symmetry broken phase, uh, which spontaneously break this magnetic symmetry, this, this, this W. So from here, you can see immediately that this, this Higgs phase is naturally an SPT, so a cluster SPT in this case. However, as, since this are usual symmetries, the, the, the breaking of, of, of a symmetry, let's say of this W symmetry, by adding tension to the strings, by adding this Term into the Hamiltonian immediately lifts your your edge modes. They they become gapped, as one expects for SPT phases protected by symmetries by ordinary symmetries. Let's look what happens in two dimensions. So now I'm go going back to two D, and let's uh, let's try to to do this this similar trick which I uh, I, I I was talking about in one D. So let me. Uh, 
So this is my boundary, and this is this is the uh, the string order parameter uh, which gets uh, finite vacuum expectation value if I go like up here, right? Because J wants to to, to make this uh, this you get a finite map from that. Now I have a magnetic symmetry which is which is which is let's say let me multiply this by by a Wilson line which starts on the boundary and goes like that and goes back. Then you see that everything here would cancel, so all sigma z squared is one, and I end up with a VEF of, of these operators. And this is, you see, this is some kind of local operators which live close to the boundary and which carry this uh, this uh, matter charge, which uh, which is which is generated by by this operator. So you see that. Uh, in in two dimensions, I immediately get degeneracy in this in this in this in this large J limit uh, because I get a you know condensation of this of this object which carry uh, Eisen charge. So I have spontaneous symmetry breaking on the boundary here, which explains the degeneracy. So 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 the question is now how robust is it? Imagine I break. My magnetic symmetry. So, what happens to the edge modes, or to, to the edge degeneracy? Uh, and uh, this you can actually work out analytically by just going very deep into into this limit large of large curly J, which essentially means that you freeze out all these kind of products. And then it's quite easy to show that on the boundary you end up with an effective theory, which is just an Ising model. With coupling controlled by the magnetic magnetic term in the you know uh, uh, of, of plaquettes near the boundary, uh, deformed with uh, with a transverse field which is uh, proportional to the this electric tension of the string which breaks the symmetry. So you see that in contrast to this one dimensional example where I immediately uh, gap out the, the the edge modes here, I really need to find a Find its strengths of a symmetry breaking uh, perturbation, the one which breaks magnetic symmetry, uh, in order to to lift uh, uh, to 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 lift the degeneracy. So so my phase diagram it looks like this. Uh, so so here is uh, you know uh, he, here is a, a what I showed you before, and now I'm I'm thinking about. Uh, what happens at the boundary, and uh, you you see that in this region, which is connected to this SPT line, which is which is strictly speaking here, I have I have a finite open region of uh, of uh, of degenerate boundary, so also of a spontaneous symmetry breaking of Ising matter symmetry on the boundary, and then it's only at some finite strengths the gap closes and. And I, I end up with a unique with a unique ground state on the bottom. Yeah. So in conclusion, I can actually distinguish the two phases, the, the Higgs regime and the confined regime, if I cut my system uh, properly, such that the symmetries are preserved, and I study what happens on the boundary. So 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 in this sense, and and by the way, this kind of this kind of finite region is kind of mimics also what happens here. So there is explicit breaking, but but you know the, uh, the the property of the one form symmetry, spontaneous symmetry breaking, is robust under this breaking. Here I have an SPT, and its physical property, which is the, the edge bones, is also robust for a while. Okay. So, 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 two phase in phase diagram, they are only separated by a boundary transition. Normally, we would still call them as the same phase. So, I'm just saying that if you want, yeah, so if you want to set, like, try to distinguish these two phases, you need to cut and then you look on the boundary. Right. But the is, that, is the Higgs phase combined phase still the same phase or a different phase? So, in the, in the boundary. There is no bound phase transition there. In the so, same phase still. But there is a way how to distinguish them by no, having a boundary transition is not definition for two different bases, though. Right. I think if you, if you replace the word phase with regime, okay. so <laughs> that this is a way to 
sharply distinguish the two regimes without claiming that there's different ways of doing that. I think that's what I'm saying. Well, I, uh, I, it's, it, it depends. So somebody comes to you and say, like, is it different or not? I, I'm kind of giving here a prescription. Cut it. If I, if and I, look, I, can, I, can I try to make everybody happy here? So, 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 <laughs> here, here actually, so, so here actually, you are, so the claim is that this uh, SPD phase is uh, SPD phase protected by two symmetries. One is the uh, uh, chart region symmetry, the other is the uh, magnetic wall from symmetry. Exactly. Plus the magnetic wall from symmetry is not in lag because of H. Exactly. So, right. so it means that that's, that means that this, uh, you know, they, so, so on this know, line, it's it's a strict symmetry. I know, but then uh, because there's no exact one from symmetry, it's impossible that uh, SPD phase and trivial phase can be connected loosely in the bulk because actually there's no exact one from symmetry. Yeah, right. I agree with that. So, yeah, okay. So, so I hope that makes everybody. Okay. Okay. Now, let me ask a question another way. In the physical world, the real world. Yeah. Okay. Can you do an experiment to tell the difference between those surface spaces? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, there are. So I guess what you can do is like, you can do this insulating cuts. I'm talking about the real world. You no, know, like, like for example, take a Josephson junction in a superconductor. Okay, so take a superconductor, another superconductor, and the normal region in between. Well, we have we, you know, we have to vacuum around this, right? Yeah. And we can maybe heat the vacuum, maybe make it more dense or something like that. What experiment do you actually do? I, I would say, you know, yeah, like Josephson junction. Did they take a junction between two superconductors or you could buy Josephson junction where you have to take a finite boundary to understand. Sorry? If to take a finite boundary, you have to put a boundary. That's all. Yeah, like, like take a defect. Yeah. Like I was saying, like the insulated defect. Yeah. And there are some edge degeneracy. How do you make a finite volume in the real world? Uh, are you talking about like standard model? Uh, are you talking about this Higgs space of the standard model? Is, yeah. When you say real world, are you yeah. yeah. What is yeah, real so, world? So, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think yeah. I think maybe. So we are uh, we are almost done. We are also also you used up the time for the questions. You know, <laughs> let them finish, and then. Okay, let, let me just uh, conclude here. So looks like it's a controversial topic. So uh, we, so I, I try to convince people here that, uh, you know, with the help of discrete gauge theories, which are very tractable, we can get some new insights into old questions. And uh, one of them is uh, this kind of uh, Higgs equals SPT. Uh, I think it's more general than what I was talking about here, because you can do different gauge groups if you want. You one, and you can distinguish uh, phases with fundamental with, with, with fundamental matter by by making cuts, yeah, and, and checking uh, what happens on the boundary. So, uh, and about real world, I think yeah. So, in the physics of superconductivity, I guess when it looks into effects like Josephson junctions. Or maybe this is, I'm not an expert on that. So maybe this quark hadron continuity, some people talk about it. So maybe if you combine different three, I'm saying that uh, it's, uh, uh, I think it goes beyond the, the, the simple Z2 gauge theory, which I was talking about. Yeah, sure. But, but when we, we talk about like a continuous, Gauge field, and actually, maybe there's no magnetic one form symmetry anymore, right? Put, 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 put a U1 gauge field in one plus one, sorry, put a U1 gauge field in two plus one. Is there a magnetic one form symmetry? That's zero. Yeah, that's zero. Exactly. That was the reason I asked my question. There is no such thing as magnetic one. Yeah, I believe it is. Put a U1 gauge field. But the question is how much we break it, right, somehow? Because, like, I'm, I'm claiming that you, you can violate it and still, for example, what you can do. What I mean is the form degree is different. In two plus one QED, there is a zero for magnetic. Ah, oh, sorry. So, but there is an electric one plus one. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm talking about three plus one. Oh, three plus one. Oh. Three plus one. Oh. Three plus one. Oh. This was all three plus one. No, 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 no. This is. Three three plus three plus three plus one. I thought it was two plus one or lower. <laughs> let me let me see. So, yeah. For the two case for these yeah. groups, it's everything was two plus one. Okay. If right. you want to repeat this for you, you one. Yeah. You go to three plus one. So, so then Thank you, you have a. 
magnetic one form symmetry. And then I guess the, the, the version of that would be that you would get spontaneous symmetry breaking on the boundary, you know, you want, uh, you want symmetry breaking. So I think we should yeah, uh, formally thank uh, <laughs> Uh, you can ask him questions, stay here, or there's coffee, to get coffee. We come back at 2.50. The next time is at 2.50. Okay. 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 Yes. Uh, 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 if it's you want it's alpha times yeah yes yeah yeah it's three two two uh two pi over l so does it that uh you want dipole you want symmetry finally reduced to some zn symmetry See, uh, yeah, because yeah, because it's dipole yeah. correspond to translation. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I don't I completely understand why you say dipole correspond to. So in this particular. Uh, yes, uh, yes, because that pi is actually yeah. really partial. I yeah. Uh -huh. in this particular case. Uh huh. I see. Uh, the problem you ask. Uh huh. Uh, becomes like this. You have, uh, we have uh, dipole symmetry can be. In the frequency as the translation symmetry, and the translation symmetry is what is uh, broken inside the magnetic. Oh, I see, because you have a magnetic group, and that is self consistent. I see, I see, yeah. right? Thank yeah. you. So, so this is only for quantum core because this emergent dipole symmetry came from the fact that the phase is related with the uh, yeah. UI. So that, that, I see, uh, yeah. So, so dipole symmetry is related with the magnetic translation, I see. yeah. Yeah, you see. Yeah, and so there's no problem. I see. Yeah, putting it on the torus. I see. Yeah, otherwise. The, yeah, otherwise. The, uh, once you have to yeah. the boundary so conditions, the it's pretty on the yeah. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, the next one. Yeah, I need to be very, yeah, it's very free done. We are able to discreetly know the analysis of water points, so, so you know, magnetic symmetry is there. Then you would get you would you would get the exactly the, the but, but but three plus one if you go to one to you then it would be one mix and then you have a bus it will stay for a while those be competition you know you have a term here which which breaks and it will even have an x y model the more general boundary, something similar to one straight body, some particular 
If you cut it in different ways, you'll probably get other stuff. You can move that line around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The client will change, but it's always the open region. So it's not, there is never a bus. It's not, I should think about that. It's a topological thing. Normally, it's based on real life. Well, it's not that. so I would say saying that it was zero and then it's, it becomes, uh, you know, normally, but that influence doesn't detect any genuine thing about it. It's just staying with the support. It's quite special because by performing a kind of a product, it's not like the same thing. Yeah, it's not like the same thing. 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 It's not like the so that becomes a so new system gets a G2 times G2 symmetry and you can discuss it as a or you can translate that to before the parameter of the doesn't in this situation work always on the line. So I think we have to see the same time. The other one is beginning as well. Step away, you can't share the the that's very that's a very that's a definitely very interesting yeah, yeah. comments that happen here. And that's usually not accounting for SPTV. Yeah, yeah. 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 special feature. Yeah. Yeah. And the remix yeah. this time yeah. that it's not yeah. a break. Here, if you go away, you also explicitly break the one from symmetry. It's still the generosity is still there, so it's important to know. So like a, it's an analogy, like you can get. Yeah. So just, I think this is going to be a repetition of probably Theo's question or possibly Theo's. I forget who asked one now. But if you were to take to go down one dimension and go down to one plus one, yeah, then all of a sudden. The SVP stuff over here yeah. would be a zero from SVP. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. once you break it, like uh, it's gone. It's, it's like what I was talking about here. So this is exactly this theory. And as soon as you break it, we will leave the usual. Okay, I'm I'm glad that young generation. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, uh, I'm not wise myself. <laughs> so, uh, I guess your claim is that that uh, it's equals SPD as a general statement, right? Yeah. And so, what is what is the SPD order in the standard model, for example? Maybe that's what. Sorry. So what is the maybe you want in 4D first before going to the model? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah sure. You know what you, you want. Yeah, so when you want, it, you like, you know, you have, let's take uh, kicks, so we should just face in the charge one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just yeah. have a rule supply. Yeah, yeah. This is a string order for us. Correct. So now we'll get to this, go back to the point that you made there. I think that's a, we don't have to think of that as a genuine order parameter because the fact that it doesn't, you know, even if it did decay essentially, I could renormalize it to not. And I guess you think there's an algorithm to, to do that in a. Yes. You know, yes. Do that in a, yes, that's right. Is that working as continuum, the algorithm? Or? Yeah, the, the algorithm is normalizing 
where so if you go away from strict magnetic symmetry in English, then everything gets perimeter wrong. So this is yeah. the stuff that right. goes yeah. down and you you divide it by a square root of the Wilson line, which also gets perimeter wrong. Mm -hmm. This should kind of compensate with that. I see like a, the Wilson line. It's, it's called for Wilson like, 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 Looks like that. So, uh, this divided by a square root. Now this step, I see. I see. Okay. This should kind of compensate. Yeah. But that you think that's the diagnostic for the Higgs phase. Uh, this is diagnostics for it can distinguish reliably in the presence of matter. Yeah. Essentially, uh, you know, we can find phase from everything else. So, yeah, it's diagnostics for the for the Higgs phase. Here it will be zero. I think. Here is zero. Fine. The U1 case, I'm uh, sorry, the U1 case, it's not, it's never zero. No. Uh, the U1 case, uh, yeah, I understand the, the U1 case, I mean, it's always perimeter, at least in the three plus one. Yeah, three plus one, the U1 case is not obvious in the signal. It's across the because but like your charges are uh, get so like you have photons which is get less and get the charge is in the in so, the so, yeah so so then then you would get exponential on top right so so from here uh oh, sorry. Is that an electric line i'm sorry i'm not sure how you define that i guess i thought you have a I thought you have 5x e to the ia 5x yeah yeah, yeah yeah okay five yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, 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 sorry. No, um, matter is gap in the. Moment, uh, wait a minute. I see. It is those, it's those rest on the magical um, push. Oh, yeah. I can send you a page. There are no, I, I, I believe in the I believe in the horseshoe. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you want to hear people complaining about the horseshoe, there's a nice review article. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, yeah, yeah, the book about it? Why the horseshoe is bad? Or why the horseshoe is well? The, it, it's good for what it's good for. We have to be really careful and call it. What were, what were you saying? End of the world? I mean, you just see the space. Yeah. And then you there's want the matter there. Yeah. Yeah. One of your sides. Yeah. 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 Like, in this case, like. Does that help it become a global center? That's what I think. Well, it's like if you, if you cut it to one slice, yeah. we have the sides of the boundary. They don't have the gauge bits oh. on the boundary. But you could choose a different boundary if you if you do it boundary this yeah, yeah. you need to do a different things first you need to change the gauss over here because you know it has three stick in it and then if you do that then you see that this quadratic symmetry check so pressure at the valve is, is not respected by this valve because it doesn't compute with the gauss for this three stick in three stick in things so so if you cut it in a different way there is a different kind of theory, which is a uh, theory of open bison. So I, I can write another theory, you know, which 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 will have uh, electric symmetry as a one which will protect it. And and for that I would have similar physics. You could have replaced you could have rotated the whole thing. Yeah, but, uh, but but it would be a theory of magnetic particles which can be. So to, to say everything in, in your that you did in the U1 theory in the continuum in 40 in our in our universe is the idea that you, you end the world here, very expensive experiment, but you end the world and you uh, apply the boundary to the gauge field. I think you can analog of that. And yeah, sorry, like, like that. Then or you do this defect, which I was saying. Or so it's cheaper. So, so you kind of you kind of you, you, you say that yeah. nothing can move through it. Nothing can move through. Yeah. And then then because of the these conditions, the gauge field is not dynamic on its boundary anymore. So now you don't feel like a global symmetry, like any charge field, super complex, any particle. 
on the demand. I'm it's not sure. Right. Well, what I'm doing technically, I'm creating the gauge development operators. Right. And in terms of this, I can write this. Okay. So I guess we could say the same thing. Like because we put directly boundary conditions, mm -hmm. you can take 5x, 5 dagger connected with the Wilson line, but because we put directly boundary conditions, A is zero. And it's fixed to be zero on this boundary. And so this is now a gauge invariant on time. So yeah. Sorry, it's not only the gauge invariant, it's the gauge that doesn't do anything. It's always gauge invariant, and now in the gauge of binary is that Is that basically that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess very helpful for me to put in maybe one. Yeah, the records here. Yes. Setting A to zero is that a gauge invariant? I mean, you can always set. You can set to whatever you like, I think, and it will, it will always give you the same. Yeah, it's really the same thing. But it's quite, yeah, it's quite normal situation. It's like what we do in ADS. No, by the way, the ADS, yeah. yeah, there is also a story that from the boundary, which is similar to the cows, so yeah, to some extent, it's very similar. To yeah, it comes from this engaging them. Yeah. Yeah. Global yeah. supplies. So I think it's kind of. But, but, but I think the reason why I feel very strong is because over there, it's quite clear that it's always the lowest return boundary and all kinds of trade and stuff that happens in the boundary that is mainly the global century. Yeah. On the boundary, so making a statement about what's happening in the bulk from what's happening in the boundary yeah. is, I think, rather yeah. difficult. Here. No, in, in the ADS, you can things. You know, all kinds of things happen. Yeah. So. Maybe, maybe there is a 